Mr. M presents Factor Rainbows. Hello everyone. In this video we're going to use factor rainbows to find whole number factors of numbers. Now when I say whole number factors I mean we won't be seeing any decimals or fractions. We're going to focus wholly on whole numbers, not parts of numbers. The first thing I'll do is demonstrate what a factor rainbow might look like, and for that we'll use the factors of the number 36. Those who are good at multiplication might be thinking to themselves different pairs of numbers that would multiply to give you 36. If you're struggling with your multiplication a little bit, you might want to check out some of my videos on divisibility rules, because those rules can help you figure out what numbers do go together to make a number like 36, so feel free to check those out first if you want. The first thing to remember when I'm finding the factors of a number like 36 is I have a starting point that's automatic. I always can start with 1 and 36. Now, why is that? Well, because we know that 1 multiplied by 36 always equals 36, because any number multiplied by 1 equals itself. So 1 and the number should always be my first two factors. And notice that I place them quite far apart from each other because I know all the other numbers are going to fit between these two numbers. I can't have a factor less than 1 and I can't have a factor more than 36 if I'm using whole numbers. Once I remember to put those numbers I can literally go by process of elimination by counting upwards and see what other factors I can find. So for example, can I multiply something by 2 to give me 36? Yes, I can. I can multiply by 2 and that will give me 18. 18 times 2 gives me 36. Can I multiply by 3 to get to 36? Is that possible? Yes, I can multiply 3 by 12 to get me to 36. Can I multiply by 4 to get me to 36? I can. 4 multiplied by 9 gets me to 36. Can I multiply by 5 to get me to 36? Here's where it becomes tricky. No. No number multiplies by 5 to give me 36. Am I done? Well, not yet, not necessarily. Can I multiply by 6? Yep, 6 multiplied by itself, by 6, gives me 36. So now I've got this long list of numbers here. Okay, so one thing I can do to sort of organize them is I can create the rainbow part of my factor rainbow. So I'm just literally going to draw the lines between, and I can alternate colors to help me keep organized and I'm going to draw these lines between. What would the point of these be? Well, the point would be to just keep them organized in pairs. Because your teacher may ask you, how many pairs of factors are there for the number 36? Or they might ask you, how many factors are there for the number 36? Let's answer both of those. So first of all, how many factors are there for 36? Well, there's as many factors as there are numbers. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and now here's really tricky part. Students often want to count both of these sixes here. They can't count them both. It's the same number. That's just one factor. So five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there are nine total factors of 30 for 36. However, if I ask for pairs of factors, well, you're going to end up counting sort of the rainbow line. So you've got one, two, three, four, five different pairs of factors that would give me 36. I can also use the rainbows to help me find common factors between two numbers. So we've already figured out our common factors for 36. So not our common factors, just our factors for 36. Now I'm going to try and figure out some factors for 24 and see if we have any factors that are common for both numbers. If that's true, we'll see them common in both rainbows. That's the idea. Why don't you take a second right now on paper and see if you can use the same method to find the factors for 24. Just pause the video and then come right back and we'll do it together. Okay, let's see how you did. So we know we should start with 1 and 24. And then again, by process of elimination, let's start looking. Does 2 multiply to give me 24? Yeah, it multiplies by 12. Does 3 multiply to give me to, get me to 24? Yes, it multiplies by 8. Does 4 multiply to get me to 24? Yes, it multiplies by 6. Does 5 multiply to get me to 24? It doesn't. And there's a few ways we can tell. Uh, if you don't already know the math, take a look down here. I've got a 5 
5 times 5 is not 24, it's 25. And if you look over here, I've gone to 6. So I'm already down to 6. So the only number that could multiply by 5 to give me 24 is 5, and that doesn't work. We know that. So we know that 5 is not one of the multiple, sorry, one of the factors of 24. So now let's create our little rainbow here. 1 is a pair with 24, 2 is a pair with 12, 3 is a pair with 8, 4 is a pair with 6. Drawing the lines besides just sort of looking kind of interesting also tells me that if I draw a line and it doesn't have a partner, I've accidentally missed a number or put an extra number in that's not a factor. So that's a really good way for me to look back and check and make sure that what I did was actually correct. Since all my numbers have partners, chances are I've done it correctly unless I've simply put the wrong number somewhere. Now let's look and see what numbers might be common on both lists. So when I look, I can see easily that number one is a common factor because it's on both lists. So I'll put it there. Two is a common factor. It's on both lists. Three is a common factor. It's on both lists. Four is a common factor. It's on both lists. 6 is a common factor, it's on both lists. 8 is not, because there is no 8 up here. 12 is a common factor. 24 is not, because 24 is not a factor of 32. So here are my common factors. Sometimes they'll ask you for the greatest common factor. In this case, the greatest common factor would be 12. That would be my GCF, greatest common factor. So as usual we like to take a look at a real life application for this math. So let's pretend you're making a DVD of a show, a slideshow or something you've made. I've had to do this lots of time and you're doing it for your class. Let's say you have 32 students in your class and let's count you two because really let's be honest you want a copy and the DVDs come in packs of three, four, and five. You've got to go buy them. You want to make sure that you have enough for your class, you don't want to pay for a lot of extra, and you certainly don't want to have too few. So what you're going to do is you're going to look at a factor rainbow and see if 3, 4, and 5 appear, and if so, which is the best one to choose. Okay, so let's make the factor rainbow for 32. So 1 times 32, 2 times 16. Is 3 a factor of 32? Is 3 times anything going to 32? I hope you're thinking about it. It does not. 4, 4 times 8. 5 go into 32? Nope. 6 go into 32? Well, I'm just going to do some mental math. 6 times 5 is 30, so 32 can't possibly be a factor of 6. 7? Nope. Same reason. So that's it. I found my factors. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. Let's pair them off quick, just to double check. Okay, they all match up, so it seems like I'm in good shape. Now, going back to our original question, which package size should I buy? Well, if I buy three or five, I'm either going to wind up with more DVDs than I need or fewer because they are not factors that get me to exactly 32. And that's where I want to be, exactly 32. The only number on this list that will get me exactly to 32 is four. Okay. Now you might say to yourself, oh, maybe I'll buy a pack of five because I want to have an extra in case something doesn't work or you might want to make a decision that way. Absolutely, go for it. But if you're looking to get the exact right number of DVDs, then you have to buy them in packs of four. Those are the only packs that will get you there. Four times eight gives me 32, which means I'll need to buy eight packs of DVDs for that to work. It's just a simple real-life application. Can you eventually do that mentally? Yeah, that's the plan. But for now, while you're trying to really be careful and not make mistakes, the factor rainbow could really help you there.